in the current technological age that we live in, it's really important for people to be mathematical thinkers. You need it in every aspect of life. Um, not just numerical things like mortgages, but working with technology, working out all sorts of things. Um, in many, many jobs also, I mean, they're predicting that in the next few years, 60% of jobs will need numerical comfort with numbers and re mathematical reasoning, but only 20% of workers have that. So one of the biggest problems I see in mathematics education is there are almost two pathways kids can go down in their math learning, and many kids go down a, a faulty pathway, a pathway that's damaging for them quite early in their career. And that pathway is one where they think math is a subject where you have lots of rules to remember. Um, they don't see a role for thinking because they're being taught very procedurally. And they um, often just see math as this really a long ladder, if you like, of rules upon rules upon rules. They're not connected. They don't mean anything. You just have to remember them. One of the things we know about math learning is that a process takes place when you learn math called compression. It's a process in the brain so that if you're learning some new mathematics, it's almost like you're, it takes up a big space in your brain. You have to think about how does this work? What does it look like? When does it work? So when you're introducing, say, addition to young children, that ideas of addition are taking up a lot of space. But as you move further on in math, those earlier ideas get compressed in your brain. Now that act of compression happens um, through, through having a conceptual understanding of math. When you learn conceptually you can engage in this compression because it, math is a conceptual subject, it builds on each other. There's not a lot to remember actually in math, it's mainly ideas that connect with each other. And if you learn in that conceptual way then this compression goes on. If you don't, if you, if you I just talk procedure after procedure and you think math is a long list of procedures um, it's very hard for that compression and instead your mind is just full of it kids try and remember lots and lots and lots of methods so that mathematical act isn't happening so it's really important that students are learning math in the right way so what we really need is students need to be flexible problem solvers. We know that one thing that separates high achieving students from low achieving students in elementary school is the kids who are successful are those who can flexibly use numbers. So if you give students problems such as 23 take away 17, um, the successful students will break up the number 23 and just think, well, I have two tens, um, I'll take 17 off 20. They'll use the numbers flexibly. Kids who are unsuccessful will cling on to methods they've been taught, like um, subtracting, uh, counting backwards, and try and use those methods. And those can be very complicated to use. So I would say my biggest frustration probably is we know how to teach math well. Um, we've got decades of research that tell us how to teach well. We, myself and four of my graduate students, taught uh, uh, a five-week algebra class over the summer to some disaffected seventh and eighth graders and they learned a huge amount. They learned more algebra in that class than they'd done all year in their school class and it was fantastic. They, they, they were engaged, they enjoyed it, they came in dreading being there and hating the idea of spending their summer doing math and a few weeks into it they were like jostling at the door to come into class, they were super excited about doing the problems. So we know how to teach math well What's really frustrating for me is it's hard to get that out into schools and classrooms. So teachers don't typically have time to read journal articles. We really have to find other ways of getting research ideas out to schools so that we can shift and help teachers teach in these better ways.